Good morning, family. Watchwoman 65, Lisa Boyce. Um, thank you for all the new subscribers. Um, I pray for you every day. I just want you to know that. And we are a church family, closer than any church building family could ever be. I said that yesterday. I wanted to talk about what I talked about yesterday about the sin nature and once saved, always saved, and eternal security is not a license to sin. A few people didn't really understand what I was saying. So I'm going to I'm going to do a video right now of apostasy and what I was trying to say. And the Lord spoke to me yesterday and he gave me some scripture. And I want to give this to you right now. It's 1 John 5 and I want to reiterate something to you. There are people, there are two types of people on this earth. There are no races of people. There are only two types of people on this earth because you're going to spend eternity in one of two places, heaven or hell. And therefore, there are two types of people on this earth, believers and unbelievers, period. We can never lose our salvation. Once we have given our hearts to, no, I didn't mean to say that. Once we have accepted and believed in Christ Jesus. See, I have to be reprogrammed from that BS that I was in when I was growing up from that Pentecostal movement. I got to still be reprogrammed. Once we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gift of grace, it is grace through faith. In Christ alone, no works are involved. Um, there are no works to maintain our salvation. There are no works to make us saved. There are no works to, main, to keep us saved. We simply believe. That's all we do. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. It's not just a head thing. It's a heart thing. I said that all week. But I want to point something out to you in scripture and the Lord told me this yesterday it's first John and if you get a chance you can read the uh, read the chapters in first John chapter 5 verse I'm gonna start with verse uh, 16 If any man sees his brother sin, a sin which is not, and I'm going to repeat, not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them, for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All right, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We are born again believers in Jesus Christ. We have him as our savior. We accepted him as our savior. He is our savior. Thus, he saved us from sin and death by being the propitiation of sin himself, by dying on the cross for us. Therefore, what I was saying yesterday, I'm going to get into. We have a sin nature because we live in the flesh. Paul struggled with that himself in the book of Romans. And you can read the, in chapter, uh, the entire chapter of Romans. I think it was Romans 7. And Paul said he does what he don't want to do and what he don't want to do, he does. <laughs> That's how we are. We're the same way. It's a, it's a struggle. Even, yeah, Romans, read the entire chapter of Romans 7. I'm not going to get into it right now, but I, I am going to read this verse because this was key. The Lord spoke to me yesterday and this was key. For I know that in me, 
That is the flesh. He's talking about the flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. We will never, ever reach sinless perfection. Ever. The key is that we believe. This is what I was trying to say yesterday. What I was trying to reiterate yesterday was talking about the apostate. And I'm going to get into that. The person who pretends like they're saved and they're not. You get a lot of people like that even in the pulpit. There are a lot of pastors who are not saved. And they're leading people to hell with them. That's what I was saying yesterday. I'm not talking about habitual stuff that we just do and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the apostle, the apostate, the person who sits there in the church next to you. You can't even tell them the part from the wheat and the tares. Those are the ones who pretend like they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Those are apostates. There are people who pretend like they're saved, go to church every Sunday, even work in the, in the pulpit. There are even some pastors, like I said. They go through the motions, but yet they're not saved at all. And the Bible has a stark warning for people like that. Because that is the parable of the wheat and tares in the book of Matthew when he talked about that. They'll be cut off. I'm talk that's what I was somewhat trying to get through to yesterday. Um, we're going to little, we're going to talk a little bit about apostasy and what it is. And the Bible teaches that everyone who was born again of the power of the Holy Spirit is saved forever. We are once saved, always saved forever. Nothing can pluck us out of the hands of the living God. We receive the gift of eternal life according to John 28. I got notes written here. Not temporary life, but eternal life. Someone who is born again cannot be unborn. You can't lose your salvation. That's unbiblical, like I said yesterday. We, can, we sin, of course. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. After being adopted into God's family, according to Romans 8.15, we will not be kicked out. There is no kicking out. We will not be kicked out of his house. We will not be kicked out of his hands, period. When God starts a work, he finishes it. So the child of God, the believer in Christ, is eternally secure in their salvation forever. However, the Bible does talk about apostasy. And these warnings have led doubt to some people of doctrine. After all, like I said, we can never ever lose our salvation. But this is what I was talking about yesterday. A person falling away has never been saved in the first place. That's what I was trying to say. The apostate. Now, in the parable of the wheat and tares, and I got this written down here in Matthew 13, 24 through 30, it provides a simple yet effective illustration of apostasy. In the same field were growing wheat and false, and this is the false wheat. False wheat are the tares or the weeds. At first, the difference between the two types of plants are undetectable. You can't tell the difference. But as time went on, as time went on, the weeds were seen for what they were. In the same way, even in any given church on Sunday morning or any other day of the week, even on YouTube, you're going to find that. And they are going to be linked up with true born again believers side by side. Only difference is one is a pretender 
and one is not. Those who enjoy the messages, even the music, the fellowship, they even work in the church as deacons and elders and, like I said, pastors. But only God can see the heart, Matthew 13, 1 through 9. The Bible warns against apostasy. It exists because, like I said earlier, there are two types of people in this world. There are no longer no races. Races don't exist. There are only two types of people. Because, like I said earlier, there's only one of two places that we go to when we die, either with the Lord in heaven or hell. Therefore, the two types of people are believers and unbelievers. And in any given church, at any given time, they sit by side by side. They're going through the motions, wearing a label. That's why I said when we go out and witness, don't ask a person if they're a Christian. Because Jehovah's Witnesses can say they're a Christian. Even Catholics say that. The term Christian, the term Christian is used too loosely nowadays. Because everybody, even atheists, are saying that. It's impossible to attend a church, serve in the ministry, and call yourself a Christian and still be unsaved. No, it's not possible. It's, it's, it is possible. That's what I meant to say, not impossible. It is possible to serve in a church, call yourself a Christian, and still be unsaved. There are pastors that are doing this. I bought up this pastor about a month ago. His name was, I think, Carlton Weeks. He, and see, again, and you, a person that doesn't start out with grace, believing in the gospel of grace, I see this a lot in them. I don't see it in the people that are grace preachers and teachers and people who proclaim the gospel of grace. But I see it a lot in the Pentecostal and in the Lordship Salvationists. It's a lot of false people out there. But this man did a 180 after I don't know how many years of being a pastor, so-called pastor. And he decided to tell people there is no hell. Can you say apostate? Seriously. The Bible warns against people like that. And he has millions of followers. The Bible warns against a pretender that sits up and pretends like they are there and just listening and not taking anything to heart. A true test of a born-again believer is their love for others. Another true test, now keep this in mind, we are saved for good works. We are not saved by works. Works will not keep you saved, nor will they make you saved. They will not maintain your salvation. But if a person, after they have accepted Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection of the cross, they have works. That's another way. But like I said, and I'm going to keep reiterating this, I'm going to keep saying this. We are not saved by works. We're saved for works. Anyone, like I said earlier, anyone can claim to be a Christian. But only those who have who have accepted the grace gospel, who have accepted God's grace, are truly saved. Because we know that it is grace through faith in Christ alone that saves us. Another way to tell a person is an apostate
is by their rejection of Christ. Acceptance and their acceptance of heresy and the carnal nature. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And scripture warns of those who pretend to walk by the faith. They're pretending. They don't really believe they haven't accepted him as savior. They haven't believed in their heart they haven't believed in their heart. They believed up here, but it hasn't reached to their heart. That's why they are prostate. Scripture in Hebrews 10, 26 through 29 give us a warning to pretend believers. They need to examine themselves before it's too late. A pretend believer is also one that has never ever had a relationship with him. Now the thing of it is, there's a way to know these people. And you can tell, ask the Lord to give you discernment because you can tell who's for real and who's not. And that's my goal for you all as a family is to be in the word constantly. Be in God's word constantly and be in prayer. Because the minute you take your focus off of God and off of his word and off of prayer, you're focusing more on the flesh and the sin. I've done that. I've done that. And, it, it, and nine times out of ten, I can pinpoint what I've done. I haven't been in the word enough. Soon as I get back into reading his word and praying and all that, I'm back on track again. You're feeding the spirit and not so much feeding the flesh. The apostate person has never taken Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to the heart. They've taken it to the head but they've never taken it to the heart. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because we have to trust him. We walk by faith, not by sight. <clears throat> I got something in here to read too. Um, hold on a minute. And this, this is good too. This is Matthew. And I found this yesterday. This is Matthew 13, the sower and the seed. God gave me this yesterday too. And I'm going to start at verse 4. You get When you get a chance, read this. And when he had sowed, some seed fell on the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they, are, where they had not much earth and they sprung and they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth so the weeds did not the seed did not spring up and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and thorns sprung up and choked them but the other fell on good ground and brought forth fruit 
some 100 fold, some 60 fold, and some 30 fold. And let me explain to this. And I got notes here on that. The seed depicts the word of God. The wayside is the path trampled through the field. It was packed hard and seed found no root. Thus the fowls, the demons, the wicked ones, snatched it away. Hence there was no response at all to the Gospels. The second category is called the stony places or the rocky ledge beneath a thin, shallow layer of soil. Thus thin crusts would warm quickly, causing the seed to sprout instantly but without adequate moisture. The sun would scorch it and it withered away. The third group of seed fell among thorns that had not been plowed. The thorns choked out the crop or choked out the word. So there are some people that receive it. And these are, once again, the apostates. But they get it choked out. Once we receive the message, the gospel of grace and the Holy Spirit indwells in us. We are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. But there are those who only listen because we receive it from the heart. But there are those who only receive it in the head. It doesn't get to the heart. Those are the ones that walk away. And like 1 John says, those are the ones who walk away from us. They never had us in the first place. They were never there in the first place. That's what I was trying to say yesterday. That's all I was trying to say. That's all I was trying to reiterate yesterday. Um, I went all over the place with this, I know. But um, it's a good read. And uh, I'll Heavy leave. Rain has been detected near your location. It's about to rain. So I will um, leave some Bible verses there for you and um, know that I didn't um, know that we sin. We do sin. But there is one that doesn't, that does, that does more than sin. They are actually apostates. They believe, they think they know, and they really don't. They haven't received it with the heart. We have received the message of God and his grace with the heart. So that's what I was uh, pointing at yesterday. Basically, the apostates, the people who pretend but are not. Not the people like us who struggle with the sin nature every day. And we do. And we will struggle with the sin nature every day. And we will sin every day until the day of redemption. But, and I'm going to get into this later on this week, there is one group of people that believes that you can achieve sinless perfection. And guess where that group of people are from? That's right. The Pentecostal movement. It's called the Holiness Movement. They have this thing called the second blessing. They think that you can re you can achieve sinless perfection. The only person who had sinless perfection is the person that died on the cross for us. Nobody else has. There's no one living above ground that is perfect. Never will be. And we won't be perfect until we're in front of him. So I just wanted to reiterate that. That's what I was talking about yesterday, about the apostate. Have a good day.